welcome to AstroVenture, the DSLR Astrophotography Channel. Hey there Astro Ventures, welcome back. If you're new to this Astrophotography channel, my name is George and this is the Astrophotography channel for DSLR and mirrorless camera bodies combined with the lenses we already own and a simple star tracker like the Skyguider Pro or the Star Adventure. Now I'm really excited because it's October 14th and I'm going to shoot the annular eclipse. But before we get to this point, we need to travel back in time and show you how it is that I figured out exactly where to be to be in this spot to maximize my shot on the annular eclipse. Well, Hester Ventures here, we are back in time any day before October 14, the annular eclipse. So let's take a look here at my planning that got me to that point down the center line of the eclipse. And so here I am at nationaleclipse.com and on this website, which this is a great website with a lot of information that you really want to get in and investigate, but on this specific page that will be linked in the information below is this interactive Google Eclipse Maps. Now, when you click this, this will bring you to a map that was developed, uh, developed by this man, uh, Xavier Jubier. I'm sure I'm butchering his name. Anyway, it brings up this interactive map. Now, one of the great things is, is that this is this map is set up not just for the United States, but those of you down in South America, the information is available. But let's go ahead and zoom in. And I'm zooming in on Utah. Now, my plan is, I live up here in northern Utah, and my plan is, is that I'm going to zoom in because I know that for my viewing, I'm planning on heading down into southern Utah. And on here, you could see this is the edge of the eclipse where the red line is, edge of the eclipse, and this blue line is the center point. Now, I plan on using, uh, uh, well, actually, I plan on going to an area that's off the beaten path, away from everybody, and down some dirt trail roads out into BLM land to f get myself away from everybody. But let's just say, for sake of argument, I'm gonna go right here along this uh, Highway 50. The beauty is, is that I can zoom in and then I can click right here, and this is gonna bring up this information. Now, this information is going to give you the, the, the start and end of the eclipse and everything. One of the things I wanna point out though is that this time here that's shown, that's time and UT, not as in Utah where I'm at, uh, but this is universal time, so this is Greenwich Mean. You're going to need to adjust that for your local time zone. So please don't confuse the fact that I see, you know, or that I'm showing you UT, UT as being Utah. But right up in here, this is where I can get the uh, latitude and longitude. There's, it's in a couple different formats here. That way I can plug that into my GPS for heading out there. And then I will have all of these times recorded within alarms on my phone so that I know exactly what is happening and when. But I will uh, also include a direct link to this website. It's a rather complex web address. So explore the nationaleclipse.com and explore this map so that you can find exactly where it is that you're going to go to set up. And now let's jump back to the future and let George continue. So there you have it. That's how I know exactly where to be. And I've got my handy little GPS here and my GPS brought me to the exact location of where it is that I need to be to maximize my time. And because of that website, I know the exact start time, I know the end time, I know the peak and the coordinates of this spot. So let's move forward. We're setting up here. We got the tripod. Tripod is set up. I've got it at a comfortable height because it's gonna take a bit of time to record all of this. Up here at the head, I have the notch back towards me for the purpose of being able to lean the camera back, lean the camera back to continue capturing the eclipse as it happens. Now, 
on the camera. I won't need the lens hood because it's going to be, be behind a solar filter. And so this is my one from 2017. I would not use this anymore. It's simply too old. But for the example purpose, we're going to go ahead and slide that on. And then I am going to secure it in place with some duct tape. And I'm not going to, you know, really put this on very snug because this is just the purpose of a tutorial. But on the actual day of the event, I have a 3D printed one with the film in there, but I'm still going to secure it down. I don't care what it is that you use. I strongly suggest put a second measure of, you know, hold to keep that in place because you don't want to damage your equipment, nor do you want to damage your eyes. Okay, so we've got the tripod here. We're all set. We've got our lens hood there. Let's go ahead and do our settings. So on the camera, I'm going to go ahead and leave the image stabilization on because with the head loose and moving it around, it'll help to stabilize it because it's not isolated sitting still. Uh, over here at shutter speed, I'm going to move this to 1 100th of a second. I'm going to set my aperture at f8. My focal length, I'm going to zoom all the way out. And then for the ISO, I'm going to set that at 250. Now that ISO you may end up needing to play a little bit with and the reason being is is that uh, depending on the filter some filters will darken a little bit more than others so don't hesitate to adjust that. And then that shutter speed of 1 100th, sure that's pretty slow but the thing is is the stabilization of being on the tripod in combination with the image stabilization on you're going to be pretty solid. It works well. Now, if you are maybe an older person or you have some medical issues where you do have a bit of shake, you might consider shooting a little bit faster because maybe this setup doesn't quite hold you still enough. Now, furthermore, what I, my next step would be is I have my phone set with my alarms already preset. And so I have an alarm set about one minute ahead of the start of the eclipse so that way I can go hey get in place get ready power everything up just check my settings make sure I'm good kind of look through make sure that it's good then I'm going to have another alarm that will go off five ten seconds before the actual eclipse starts so I can take my first photo before anything has actually occurred then I'm gonna have another alarm set telling me okay here it is it's now starting at that point there I'm just going to continue to take images. Uh, no, I'm not just going to hold this trigger down and just fire away. But you know what? Every 10, 15 seconds, you know, because it's not really that long of an event, you could just keep, you know, click, 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 you know, and just keep them firing. And then I'll have an alarm that's going to tell me when I hit peak. And then I'll have an alarm that's going to tell me uh, when the end is like 15 seconds out and then when it actually ends and, and you feel free to set up the alarms whatever's going to work best for you and, and maybe even keep a scratch paper so that you know you know what alarm and have your phone set so that your clock will stay on and that way if you get lost within your alarms you can check your little info sheet that you keep beside you along with your phone so you can keep on track. Now if this were the actual uh, uh, full eclipse that'll happen in 2024, I have that a little bit different in that I actually keep a separate alarm with a separate sound to let me know when I'm going to hit full eclipse because at that point for a full eclipse, you actually have to remove that filter. And with that, this is where it gets dangerous because pointing a camera at a full eclipse without a filter, you have to do it right. So I have those alarms to let me know, okay, here's full eclipse. And then I would set up another one 15 seconds into full eclipse. That way I've got that buffer, pull off my filter. Then I'll have an alarm that lets me know 30 seconds before the end of full eclipse so I can get it back on, giving myself a little bit of extra time. And then maybe five seconds before full eclipse ends. So again, I can start shooting and maybe catch the diamond ring or whatever. But you set up the alarms for what's going to work best for you and I really strongly suggest next to you on a table or whatever, have them written out on a piece of paper so that you can match them in case you get lost within the different alarms that you're doing. And then finally, uh, if somebody comes up to you, I don't mean to be rude, 
But honestly, anybody comes up and tries to disturb me, I'm just going to say, I'm sorry, I can't talk to you right now. It's not like you can reschedule a solar eclipse. And the time to talk to me was beforehand. So there you have it. If you have any questions, I would love to answer them. You could certainly throw them down below this video. I'll do my best to not miss them. But I would encourage you to go over to our Facebook group, AstroVenture DSLR, and throw the questions up there. There's where I'm most likely to catch your questions or your comments, and I would be more than happy to address those there. Additionally, uh, if you know anybody that might be considering, you know, photographing this eclipse, please, you know, like, share this video out, ring the bell, and subscribe. But get it out there because, you know what, yeah, October 14th is going to be here real quick, and I would hate for somebody to miss because they just didn't know what to do. And I'm hoping with today's tutorial, I kind of showed you what it looks like to do it. So there you have it. Till next time, I wish you clear skies and uneventful nights.